Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in lovely Lauderdale by the Sea. How, oh, what's the temperature out there? 74 degrees, and we still haven't got to our hot season, thank God. Ah, uh, my thumbnail. What does my thumbnail say? My thumbnail says today $2,500 gold and $50 silver this year. Notice I put a question mark on there. I didn't put uh, exclamation marks, uh, so I didn't want it to look clickbaitish. <laughs> um, so the question mark is appropriate. Uh, does t gold and silver hit $2,500 this year? I think it does. I have been saying since uh, uh, 2016 that I th felt that the uh, uh, election, the 2020 uh, elections, was when we would see all the shit hit the fan economically, you know, whether it's the uh, Dow, whether it's NASDAQ, whether it's a housing market, and whether it's just the collapse of the U.S. dollar. I think that, and I have been saying for a while that I felt that we were going to see it after the election regardless of who won. Um, and again, if you've been watching my show for the last uh, several months, you'll notice that uh, I've been saying that, that regardless of who wins, that I think that uh, 2020 election after that is when we see the, kind of the collapse of uh, certain parts of our financial system and our U.S. dollar and, uh, and the uh, rise of gold and silver. Um, so I believe we're going to see it possibly this year. I think this year may be the year or the beginning of next year where we, think we start to see things really take off and the uh, uh, stuff fall apart. Uh, that's my opinion, of course. And uh, the reason I believe that is because they've just been uh, uh, printing, printing, printing nonstop, uh, even under a somewhat supposedly conservative administration of Donald Trump. Uh, and trust me, there is no such thing as the word fiscal conservative in uh, Washington, D.C., whether it's left or right. None of them are fiscal conservatives whatsoever. However, the administration that's in charge right now would be considered the least fiscally responsible of the two parties. And uh, gosh, can you imagine what we're going to be seeing coming up here? And uh, as I said pre-election, it didn't matter who won this election. I still think even if uh, uh, Trump's administration was still in right now, we're still in for a world of shit. Maybe it's a good thing he didn't win as far as that's concerned, as far as he's concerned, uh, when he sees what's going to happen uh, in the upcoming years. And the problem with the uh, Biden administration is that uh, they're just going to accelerate this uh, uh, curve downward uh, for the U.S. dollar and accelerate the curve upward for spending. Uh, so again, I don't think it matters who won, but I do believe that uh, this current administration is just going to accelerate the whole process uh, by 10. <laughs> Uh, that's my opinion. And let's take a look at ZH. It's going to be a, ZH. ZH. It's going to be a quick, quick report today. Metals are kind of like sideways. Not much monkey hammering going around or going on with metals. And uh, <clears throat> and they're not shooting up uh, drastically at all, at all either. So I'm kind of in the sideways moment right now. Let me take a sip of coffee here. Another little itch in my throat. Mm. Sorry about that. And uh, take a look and see what's happening here with uh, ZH. Um, not too much in gold and silver news, and uh, I'm going to just touch over a few things. Uh, border crisis, uh, Biden says Putin a killer. Uh, why would he do that? Why would? Aren't we supposed to have presidents that are uh, 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 diplomats, not uh, uh, serious assholes? That I guess we've had a, a serious asshole problem with presidents for quite some years now. Uh, but really, come on, give me a break. Uh, you're, you're supposed to uh, create peace amongst nations, not not create the division with the uh, uh, largest, uh, second largest superpower in the world, or third, if you want to consider the Chinese a top. Anyways, I digress. We're talking about gold and silver, not politics. Uh, what interest rate triggers the next crisis? Um, <coughs> Interest rate triggers the next. This is kind of interesting um, because uh, oh, I got this chart I'm going to show you in a little bit here anyways. Is that a macro trend chart? Uh, but if you look at the 10-year uh, uh, interest rates, they've just been going down and down and down. Uh, although last week uh, it was reported that the prices of gold and silver were down be as a result of 10-year treasuries hitting an all-time high, I'm not sure I'm entirely believing that. I don't think that the those interest rates really do have a direct, you know, we're told that uh, if treasuries and interest rates get higher or if the real rates, real rates, which means that the uh, rate of interest that's being paid is higher than the uh, uh, current inflation rate uh, leads to a, a positive thing instead of a negative thing. Uh, I don't believe that uh, 
uh, uh, interest rates uh, can possibly go up enough to make a difference to, uh, for gold and silver. I believe that these interest rates hikes that we've seen that have coincided with gold and silver getting monkey hammered were nothing more than monkey hammer and manipulation in the market. I don't think the up in interest rates were the reason for gold and silver to fall at all. I think it was an excuse or used as an excuse for people to go in and monkey hammering the markets at the same time. Uh, because if when I've been looking for the last year and when I see dollar strength, dollar strength usually happens before the New York market opens. You start to see dollar strength uh, uh, jump up and then all of a sudden you see markets in the gold and silver get monkey hammered down only temporarily. I kind of think what's happening here is, is that uh, uh, we've got a huge uh, uh, problem out there with with the uh, paper contracts, COMEX, having to fill all these gold orders. They're actually having to deliver gold and silver, real gold and silver right now. They haven't had to do that in years and years and years. And that's slowly been on the increase. Every year it seems that like people are asking more and more for delivery, and we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, people don't want to hold the paper contract. They want to have the real gold and silver in their hands. Uh, and so that's leading to uh, gold and silver to fly out of the vaults of London, fly out of the vaults of uh, uh, COMEX, and, uh, and they don't have a lot of gold there to begin with. So I believe a lot of this monkey hammering could have something to do with trying to protect uh, the London bullion banks and the uh, COMEX and uh, uh, the ETFs out there. I really do. I believe that the uh, uh, that uh, gold and silver banks are in big trouble. Uh, I believe that COMEX is in trouble. That's my opinion. I believe London's in trouble. Um, I believe the ETFs are probably in trouble. They don't have the metal to, to, to cover their uh, paper. That's I'm pretty certain of that. Um, if they do, they're probably leveraged 100 to 1. So uh, I believe that this, this, these down prices and this monkey hammering we're seeing with gold and silver have uh, been direct result of manipulation and that they use the rate, uh, the rise in treasuries, they use the rise in the dollar as an excuse to monkey hammer it. And it looks good from the outside by most dumbasses at Bloomberg's and Wall Street Journal and uh, CNBC who wouldn't know what a real gold market looks like to start with. <laughs> so anyway, sorry about that. Uh, arguments over stimulus. Oh, not going to read that. Uh, that's depressing. Uh, NASDAQ futures tumbles as Treasury yields suddenly surge ahead of the FOMC. Uh, and I took a look, and uh, Treasury rates are up a little bit, but again, it hasn't affected gold. Go figure. Why not? Uh, it's gone parabolic, Canadian housing, and one shocking chart. Uh, not too much here. Poland wants more gold. That was the only article I saw on gold and uh, silver. Uh, Poland's uh, uh, wants more gold, the most reserve of reserve currencies. Uh, so that's kind of interesting that uh, Poland is building up their uh, gold reserves even more. I guess they have a few smart people over there. And that's really about it. Not too much in gold news here. Let's move along real quickly to uh, GATA.org. You've probably read these articles. You've been watching my show. I've been telling you to bookmark this site. So you probably read this before I even got to it. But in case you haven't, let's take a look and see what's new on there. Uh, few, we saw that yesterday's futures market positioning wildly uh, for monetary uh, metals. Everything Bloomberg wants you to know about gold isn't much. <laughs> That's a pretty cool because uh, it's kind of true. Uh, the article talks about, uh, here, I'll read it real quick. Uh, Bloomberg, kind of what I just talked about, these people at these financial uh, uh, publications and uh, financial networks like CNBC and Bloomberg and, and Fox uh, uh, Business News, when they talk about, I, I don't know if they know what they're talking about in equities and stuff, but when it comes to gold and silver, these people are complete morons. It's like they, they, they had to go look up Wikipedia and learn about gold and silver. Uh, so never, never listen to Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, CNBC, any of these corporate uh, 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 talking head uh, news channels or uh, uh, these corporate newspapers that, that claim they know about. They don't know shit. Uh, so don't ever listen to those guys. Everything Bloomberg News wants you to know about gold isn't much. Uh, Bloomberg News Today devotes much of its homepage to an eight-minute video segment by its reporter Henry Baker. Uh, I guess Henry discovered Wikipedia gold page too. That apparently was first posted several weeks ago and is ridiculously and arrogantly titled Everything You Need to Know About Gold, as if such knowledge could be conveyed in eight minutes. Now this, again, this is typical of your corporate uh, financial media. Uh, they don't know crap about precious metals. Trust me, folks, the moment you know more about it than they do, and uh, especially if you've been watching my show for the last year. Uh, but most of you know more about gold than these people do. Uh, so the segment might be more accurately titled, Everything Bloomberg News Wants You to Know About Gold and No More. So, and that's probably true. Uh, Baker begins by asserting the most common fallacy about gold, that it pays no interest. 
But of course gold can pay interest just as regular government currencies can. When it is lent, as it often has been lent by governments themselves in pursuit of suppressing its price and competition with uh, government currencies. So, uh, of course, gold can be loaned out, and you can't. it does get interest. In fact, the government does it all the time. The government was leasing, uh, UK government, the United States government, they were leasing gold out and making 1% and 2% to do that at one time. So that's complete bullshit. So uh, Baker starts out in the Bloomberg article, or the Bloomberg uh, video, uh, right off the bat with some stupid stuff. Then Baker recommends exchanging uh, ex then Baker recommends exchange traded funds as good vehicles for investors who want to own gold. Again, Baker doesn't know shit about gold. I'm just going to come out and say this. That's my opinion. Uh, Bloomberg doesn't know shit. They do. Bloomberg probably does. I won't say Bloomberg like there's a, a Bloomberg runs the place, but uh, you know, there's people there that know about gold, but they just don't want you or they don't want the general public to. They'd rather have the general public buying what they want them to buy. Uh, so Baker recommends exchange traded funds as good vehicles for investors who want to own gold, which is complete bullshit. They don't even own the gold. Most of them are leveraged 100 to 1. I don't trust them bastards at all. Uh, neither should you. That's, again, my opinion. Uh, without acknowledging that some gold ETFs play fast and loose with the metal they claim to own. Exactly right, GATA.org. This is why you need to have this site bookmarked. To his credit... <clears throat> Baker interviews the former director of the U.S. Mint, Ed Moy, and an anon anonymous stacker who makes some valid points. Though when Baker questions Moy about U.S. gold reserves at Fort Knox, nothing is said about whether any of the metal may be encumbered by leasing, swapping, or other mechanisms. Oddly enough, not oddly enough, interestingly enough, this site, GATA.org, was basically created because... This group of gentlemen that created this website and created this organization were claiming that there is no gold in Fort Knox or that we need to have an audit. And to this day, that still has never happened. Um, of course, the segment omits any mention of serotypous intervention in the gold market by governments and central banks to manipulate the monetary metals prices. And again, this is what I've been talking about, uh, that I don't believe that the interest rates at all cause prices to gold, uh, gold and silver go down, like interest rates are up today and nothing's happened in gold and silver markets. I believe it is manipulation and monkey hammering by uh, big major entities and most likely governments involved as well. Uh, so that's why you've seen the gold price. And this is not just conspiratorial bullshit I'm giving you here. This is a real stuff. Uh, if you get a chance, just uh, Google the name Ted Butler and start reading about what Ted Butler writes about, about gold and silver manipulation. And uh, it's a very smart man. He'll explain it. So this is not uh, uh, any controversial uh, uh, nonsense I'm, I'm telling you here. This is fact. Uh, I do believe, and a lot of people believe, that governments and uh, large entities have been monkey hammering gold and silver prices for years, and they have the power to do it. And uh, the way it's done would simply maybe suggest that it is absolutely happening. Uh, nor is there any mention of U.S. Treasury Department's Exchange Stabilization Fund, which is authorized to intervene secretly in any market in the world and whose funds for market intervention were recently increased by hundreds of billions of dollars, as if the U.S. government was playing a lot more secret intervention. So yes, folks, there is a department in the U.S. Treasury that has complete secrecy that can spend billions of dollars to bail out uh, uh, an individual or bail out a person. You will never know about it. I will never know about it. I don't even know what the presidents know about it. I don't know how secret it is. Uh, however, uh, there is a group that does that, and this same group is the group that probably monkey hammers or helps get uh, helps monkey hammer gold down. And this could also be the very same group that's going to try to save uh, the ETFs when they finally go down, or uh, try to uh, help uh, uh, save uh, Comex or London bullion markets. So, uh, yeah, yeah, there is major manipulation going on, and don't don't uh, be fooled that there's not. Also left out are the recent confessions by major investment banks to manipulating the gold markets and the hundreds of millions of dollars in fines those banks have paid as penalties. So, you know, for years and years and years, many of us would call, you know, uh, tinfoil. Put on your tinfoil hat, Brian. Put on your tinfoil hat, Peter Schiff. Um, you know, m many of us were called tinfoil hat, you know, conspiracy theory people. Uh, until, until these banks were actually investigated and we have facts that they that they've been uh, charged with manipulating markets so we know for a fact that uh, manipulation is happening has happened and uh, uh, that they've actually been fined for it and uh, potential jail time in the future anyway so I'm gonna move along here apparently Bloomberg News doesn't think its audience needs to know about this stuff although GATA has long provided the news organization with comprehensive documentation 
Good article to read. Highly recommended. Everything Bloomberg News wants you to know about gold isn't much, and I don't have much respect for any of these publications. Anyway, as you know, and I won't go into that again. Uh, let's move on to the next thing here. The blog, Sprott Money, says comics delivery update. Uh, after a tumultuous 2020 for the bullion banks, the delivery demand at comics has continued unbated for 2021. Um, more or less, they're kind of showing here that take a look at this chart right here, or not this chart, but take a look at this data. Uh, 2016, in the month of March, 2015, 53 tons of gold uh, was delivered uh, from comics. Uh, look at the rise in this price, or the rise here. March, two, six, uh, March 2016 is when I think that this cyclical bull market started. Uh, it jumped up to 743 tons. Then March uh, uh, 17 was 187. Uh, 2018 was 518. Uh, last year was 396. And where did I uh, read here? Uh, we are looking at potentially 379. Now, March is typically a month that deliveries aren't made. So this is really crazy, kind of. Um, and this tells me that uh, people don't want to own paper. People are forcing delivery of gold and silver by, with Comex. I think there's going to be a big problem here coming up soon. Um, you know, maybe by the end of the year, maybe next year. Tough to say, folks. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see some defaults from uh, uh, Comex, London, or uh, some ETFs. Uh, <clears throat> but they have someone to bail them out. And who would bail them out? What's the name of that? Uh, let's see. What's the name of that government agency that'll bail them out? Uh, oh, anyways, here's some. <laughs> I just talking about the uh, article we were just reading. Oh, never mind. Anyway, we'll move along here. Uh, so it looks like uh, the big delivery month, and this is going to cause the prices of metals to, to go up. Interestingly enough, look, 1.64% uh, treasuries are up even higher. However, let's take a look at gold and silver prices. Not down much at all. So you know what? I don't think it's in, you know I don't think that uh, treasury or interest rates or a rising dollar have a significant impact on the price of gold, silver, and platinum. I don't think so. I think that the, the, that that is used as an excuse to manipulate markets, gold, silver, and precious mar metals markets downward. Uh, so I don't think that the uh, cause of downward gold and silver uh, prices is, is a result of uh, uh, treasuries being up and the dollar being up. It's a it's a result of uh, direct monkey hammering. And uh, again, the the excuse used why it's down is uh, higher treasuries and uh, uh, a stronger dollar, uh, which I think is complete bullshit. Again, it's all monkey hammering. Meanwhile, buy the dips as I've always said. When you see these dips, just buy the darn things. Uh, let's look at uh, today's gold and silver price of seventeen twenty eight. Uh, low in a 1738. That's actually up there last night a little bit. 1738 being the high. Uh, so we're moving in these five dollar increments, and I like that. That's pretty safe. Uh, but still, you know, we could see some more monkey hammering here in the future. So get ready uh, to put on your buying pants <laughs> and uh, buy the dips. Uh, silver at 2581. Uh, uh, being the low in 2609. So sitting in this high 25, again, silver's doing fine. It's just kind of like resting uh, where it's been for quite some time. Silver's holding in that mid-20s level. Uh, gold is the one that's got the shit kicked out of the most for the last several months. Uh, but again, it provides a great buying opportunity. And the problem with all these metals, gold and silver uh, and platinum, uh, is that you just can't buy them at these levels. Gold's still bringing anywhere from $100 to $200 premiums to buy the real stuff. And silver is anywhere from $3 to uh, $5 to buy the real stuff. And I think platinum's still got a uh, $80 to $100 premium as well. Uh, let's take a look at a few other things here. As far as products out there, best products out there are still bars. Uh, if you're paying more than $90 an ounce for gold as a premium, you're paying too much. And I know that Maple Leafs and Eagles are all over that price. And you're going to say, Brian, I like those products, but it's too much money, folks. Uh, if you're going to buy gold right now, stick with bars. You know, the most you should be paying is $90 over spot for bars or any kind of gold. Uh, I can't see paying $120, $150, $200 over. It's just not right when you can buy it for, you know, a cheaper uh, bar for 90 bucks over. So I'm recommending bars. Stay away from coins, period. Unless you can buy the stuff for $90 an ounce or less. Uh, silver, my suggestion is if you're paying more than 4 and 5 bucks an ounce premium for silver right now, um, it's too high. 
Uh, you should be on five bucks or less on your silver premiums. If you're paying more than five bucks, you're overpaying in my not overpaying. That's what the market's demanding, but you shouldn't be paying more than five dollars an ounce premium on any type of silver right now. And I know you're going to say silver eagles are eight bucks over, uh, and they are even at the cheapest prices out there, still like seven, eight bucks over, eight or nine bucks over. Uh, but no less, that's just too money, too much money, folks. Uh, instead of buying silver eagles at those levels, I'd say you better stick with the uh, uh, ninety percent silver or generic bars that you can buy at four to five bucks over. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's really about it. Uh, other than let's go over yesterday's video and uh, talk about uh, some of the comments there. I'm going to get through these real quick and let's see what the comments say here. And again, I'm going to jump through them real quickly. Um, uh, Mr. Robert, uh, Keller Robert here says, uh, Hey, Brian, the reason I stack uh, American Silver and American uh, Gold Eagles is you get what you pay for. If you buy high-end Cadillacs, the resale in three years will be higher than a compact car. Unfortunately, that's not always true, sir. Um, <clears throat> when, when, when you get into a, a really high market, when, when gold and silver market starts getting really high, what you're going to probably see is a large amount of sellers. And when you get into bubble territory in, in the gold market, you, you're going to see a large amount of sellers, people selling into the market because they want to take advantage before it crashes, especially if the market goes way up and starts to back off some. That's when you'll see a huge amount of sellers. At that point, premiums completely disappear. Everything is discounted across the board. So uh, you could walk in to sell your gold eagles and be sitting next to a guy with gold bars and be wondering why you know he's only you know you're only getting about the same or maybe five dollars more than he is when you paid a hundred dollars more an ounce than he did. Uh, that's because premiums just completely disappear in those type of markets. Uh, so why pay it up front? I'd rather see you buy extra gold or instead of, you know, for example, right now, a gold bar, uh, let's just use the price of uh, uh, 1730. Uh, a gold bar is going to run you uh, 1820 versus $1,930 for a gold eagle, $130 more. I'd rather see you buy the bar at uh, 18, let's see, what is it, 1820, a gold bar at 1820, and then instead of a, a gold eagle at 1930, so I'd rather see you get the gold bar for 1820 plus three or four more ounces of silver for the same price you'd pay for a gold eagle. So I think it's a better deal, sir, uh, uh, to avoid the higher premium products. You know, I've always said the simplest way to look at this, buy the cheapest premium product you can, cheapest recognizable premium product that you can. Uh, and uh, I think that's the best deal. Of course, Canadian, Chinese, and South Africans have similar products. But anyway, I'm going to go along to a couple other questions up here. I buy almost all my gold at auctions, and I buy only NGC and PCGS graded coins. Well, Jim, that's great. You're kind of a coin collector, but th that is not bullion, really. And you're, if, you're, if you're buying from auctions, you're paying a premium and a VIG. You're paying the, uh, uh, you know, you're paying the charges at the auction charges, uh, the extra uh, fees for that. And on top of that, you you know you are buying uh, numismatic stuff if you're buying graded coins. Uh, big difference uh, between buying that and buying gold bars and, and eagles. For example, a certified twenty dollar gold piece in MS62 or 63 is probably going to run around twenty one hundred, twenty two hundred dollars. It doesn't even have an ounce of gold in it. It's 0.96 ounces of gold, so it's four percent shy of an ounce. Uh, but it sells for about $21, $2,200. Meanwhile, you can buy a pure ounce of gold for $1,820, so about uh, $400 cheaper. So the uh, coins that you're buying, sir, are more based on collector value. Uh, and again, I'm not a big, I, I believe in separating the two. I don't think you, sh I sh you should buy one or the other. If you want to buy gold, stick with the cheapest premium gold products that you can buy. You're just buying gold. Who cares what it looks like? It's not collectible. And if you want to buy coins and rare coins and collectible type stuff, then do that. Don't try to mix the two. I'm not a big fan of mixing the two. Feel free to give me a call anytime, and I'll explain more. more you know, I'll give you some uh, more explanation on that, Jim. Uh, how you doing, King? Glad you're watching the show. Uh, we talked about 10-year uh, bonds and stuff like that. Don't worry about bonds. Just put that out of your head. Uh, your gold and silver is going to go up in value as time goes on. Uh, Nick M says, my local shop wants to pay me spot for silver while charging spot plus five or seven. Um, it's a strange deal right now, Nick. I did notice that the wholesale prices, I'm going to give you an example. Uh, the wholesale buy price right now on generic one-ounce silver 
oddly is uh, like spot plus a dollar. So the whole that's the average. The wholesale dealers out there that buy large quantities of this are offering to buy it. Uh, any quantity you give them for about spot plus a dollar. And they're asking spot plus 350. So the wholesalers do have a big spread on that. But I have a feeling that's because the product is becoming more available but delivery times are longer and longer. I also think that a lot of dealers are getting stacked up on silver right now since the sales have backed off a little bit and they don't want to overload and pay too much and have too much sitting on hand. So it's kind of a strange environment out there but neither neither here nor there. Uh, I think you're good uh, if you're not, don't pay more than four and five bucks an ounce for any silver, period. Uh, I think if you're paying more than four or five bucks an ounce, the product is probably overpriced. Uh, John, uh, hey, thanks for watching the show, John, and I'd love to be fishing on that pier today, too. So, <laughs> uh, little Robin says, I bought a couple monster boxes, and my dad's friend said, You paid too much, and I paid under nine grand. Well, you're good for under nine grand, and chances are, uh, based on that price of nine grand that you bought your monster boxes at, I suspect that uh, it was a year over a year ago or before the virus, more than likely. Um, and your premiums weren't that high at the time. You were probably paying spot plus four and a half. Although I still think you, like your father, I still think you've been probably a little better off buying generics at spot plus two dollars at the time. I believe you would have saved yourself uh, fifteen hundred bucks per box. Uh, and I don't know uh, that you're going to see a big advantage by buying silver eagles, but no less, you got them at the right time, and uh, you're good. You just have to wait for higher silver prices. Uh, silver and gold eagles are beautiful, and they absolutely are, sir, and that's the one reason I do like them, and I like to buy American, but, you know, there's a price I'm willing to pay, and there's a price I'm not willing to pay. Well, that's really about it. Um, I'm going to uh, close this show up here. Uh, feel free to give me a call anytime at 954-493-8811 if you got any questions uh, or, uh, or uh, want to know what the best deal of the day is. Happy to help you there. And uh, if anything crazy happens today, I'll uh, come back do another show. If not, I'll come back tomorrow and uh, do our next show. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day and uh, talk to you soon.